Hi, and welcome to the first of two podcasts on the muscular system of our bodies. Now, what you're looking at here to begin this great topic are two very different types of, uh, of individuals and how they've developed muscle. This first upper one is a, a power lifter, and the second one, the lower picture, is a bodybuilder. And they both have lots of muscle, but it's very different types of muscle. And, and they've both done lots of different types of training and different routines, but the end result is very different. And in fact, the one with the large, big muscles, the bodybuilder, probably isn't as strong as that power lifter. And so they both do some sort of strength training. They both um, use resistance to gain muscle. But that's primarily all the bodybuilder is doing. They just want to um, increase the amount of, of these guys, these little subunits in muscle. They're called myofilaments. They just want more of them. So physically, their muscles become bigger, called hypertrophy. On the other hand, the power lifter, the power lifter wants to be able to sustain that muscle's ability for much longer. So they have to do some additional training. They have to get more blood flow to the muscle. And so if there's more blood going to the muscle, there's more oxygen going to the muscle. And if there's more oxygen, that muscle can make more energy and contract longer because that means that then if there's more um, blood flow and more oxygen you're going to develop more mitochondria in your muscle cells and if there's more mitochondria those muscle cells will get fed a lot more ATP a lot more energy and they'll last longer so despite thinking that bodybuilders are actually very strong the power lifters the ones that don't look as glamorous actually have the stronger more enduring muscles Enough about those bodybuilders and power lifters. Um, let's take a look at the different types of muscle in your body. And the first, which we just got done talking about, is skeletal muscle. It's voluntary, under our conscious control. And it has these striations, these banding patterns that we'll look at more closely on the other podcast. And its primary function is to move bone. The second type is cardiac muscle. It's also striated. <clears throat> but it's not under our conscious control and in fact what's pretty unique about cardiac muscle is that it beats to its own drum it has its own electrical circuit that keeps it beating and the third type of muscle is smooth muscle this is involuntary but it, and it's even not striated hence smooth and this is found in our blood vessels to help them contract or relax and in our digestive system like the walls of our stomach and intestinal lining. Despite there being three types of muscle in this podcast, in this unit, we are just going to really focus in on the skeletal muscle from here on out. So let's take a look at a really general um, the picture of a muscle and the one that really comes to mind is the bicep. It all it has all the requirements of of a general muscle that I, we'd like to look at today. And so the first thing that it has is the tendon. And tendons help those skeletal muscles do their function, which is to move bone. If we didn't have tendons, those muscles couldn't even attach to bone and begin to move them. And so that's the first main component. Um, the second thing that you should know is something called an origin. And this is the part of the muscle or tendon that attaches to a, a particular bone that doesn't end up moving because of that muscle. Here's what that means. If we look at the other end, the insertion, that's the part where the mus same muscle is attached though to a different bone that allows it to move. So if you put the two together, just think, imagine this. If we're contracting the bicep muscle, that means this tendon is pulling on that forearm bone to move it, whereas the origin up here, which is on the uh, the scapula, um, that doesn't move at all. So that kind of gives it some leverage to pull that other bone towards the origin. Keep moving on. Um, 
And the last component to the anatomy of a skeletal muscle, something called the bursae. It's almost like cartilage where it's a, a shock absorber and a lubricant. Um, but this, in this case, we're looking at something that a little bit of a fluid filled pouch that reduces friction between tendons and bone. Now what we'll do is look at the primary functions of skeletal muscle. First up, obviously, is movement. So how do your skeletal muscles do this? Well, to, to move your bones, they muscles must contract. And when we refer to contraction, that just means that they have to shorten. They're pulling one bone at the insertion closer to the origin. Now, for example, if you think about your calf muscle, your gastrocnemius, if you contract that, it points your toes down. That would be, your calf muscle would be the prime mover. It's the main muscle responsible for that movement. However, there's some other muscles helping out. There are synergists, like the soleus, which is right near your gastrocnemius, and it helps to point those muscles, those toes down. On the other end of the spectrum, there's also antagonists. And these are things that do the exact opposite. We've got to be able to have a muscle that reverses the action of the gastrocnemius. So if that muscle, if you still have your toes pointed down right now, point them up to the sky. You'll notice there's another muscle that's responsible for that. And so that's the antagonist. And in this example, it's called the tibialis anterior. The next function of skeletal muscle is perhaps something that we overlook, and that's posture, as we all straighten up a little bit taller in our chairs. How do your muscles do this? Well, basically, they rearrange and, and move um, your body parts into a position that maximizes their function. What does this mean? This means that in order to have posture, whether it's good or bad, there's something called tonic contraction always going on in your muscles. This is where only a few of those muscle cells or muscle fibers have to contract at a time. So it conserves energy, but it, it keeps you upright and in the best position to maximize um, your function. Now the last function of skeletal muscle is to keep us warm. And so how does this happen? Well, those same muscle fibers, when we look at a later video, we'll find when they contract and shorten, there are two different chemicals sliding past each other. And that motion produces heat, which helps us maintain our body temperature so that it doesn't get lower than the regular body temp, 98.6 Fahrenheit, um, and it doesn't dip into hypothermic uh, levels because when hypothermia sets in, everything in your body starts to happen a little slower. All right, we're almost finished. So we're moving on to some basic general uh, movements that muscles produce. And I like to look at these in pairs. The first two in a pair are the basic ones, flexion and extension, your bicep and tricep great example of this, or your hamstrings and your quadriceps in your upper leg. The next pair is abduction and adduction. Think about this. If you wanted to raise your arm abducted away from your body, this muscle, the deltoid muscle, will do that. There is another muscle below that near your armpit called the serratus anterior that will help to adduct it. Add it toward the body. In addition, there's some muscles that help to rotate around an axis. There's some, like if look at your toes, to move them in and out, inversion and eversion. And a really common one, especially in physical therapy, is this picture down here um, of the toes with the gastrocnemius and tibialis anterior. The dorsiflexion, toes up, plantar flexion, toes down. So as you start to study the muscles uh, for the muscle test, think about some of those basic motions and movements that will help you pair together certain muscles. For example, um, let's see, the, 
the uh, deltoid, oops, the deltoid muscle and the serratus anterior. Let me see if I can get a good one. There's the serratus anterior right next to the trapezius and the latissimus dorsi. Um, let's see. There's the let's see brachioradialis right here. Um, a lot of the flexor muscles on the anterior side and the extensor muscles on the uh, posterior side. The longest muscle in your body is the sartorius. It starts at your hip and goes all the way right around your knee. Um, you can see the, the muscles like the rectus femoris, the big quad main muscle in your quadricep muscle, or in your quadricep. And here's that tibialis anterior that I was referring to earlier. Let's see if I can get a good one. Right there, at the front of your cat of your tibia gastrocnemius in the back. So think about those basic muscle movements as you start to learn the muscles. I think it'll help you make your studies a lot easier. And I hope this video was helpful too.